Morning, everybody. Old Blue's a little bit dirty to start this week off. It's Monday morning. That's okay. Maybe we can get her a battle on the way home. I'm in, where am I? Iowa, Burlington. I'm in West Burlington, Iowa. I just loaded up my freight. I'm ready to hit the road. We're heading to Langbank, Saskatchewan, which is about 1,700 kilometers away or 1,100 miles. We're gonna get there tomorrow sometime, deliver the next morning, and we'll see what we have after that. Towards the end of this week, I have to be back home because we have to sign papers with lawyers and stuff for our new house. So I'm still talking about that because I'm still excited about it. It's coming real soon, coming real soon. Are you as excited as I am? I doubt it, I doubt it, I doubt it. So, uh, I parked in a puddle because that's what I do. Uh, I've already gotten out of here once before. I can do it again. I want to show you guys my load. Whoa, 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 we whoa, 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 well, sacrificed my ankle for you guys to show you this. Got myself all wet, splashed myself. Alright, so we're all tied down, we're ready to rock and roll. Another puddle, another puddle. All the way to the back here. And these fine tires are coming with me all the way to Saskatchewan. There are farmers out that way that I'm sure will be very happy to see these. Oh, you can see the styrofoam sort of lifting up there already. Ah, I can't get up there right now, but uh, they put that styrofoam underneath the straps to protect the paint on the rims from my straps, right? Yeah, it'll be fine. It's good. It's being held down by the two straps there. They definitely don't want anything because the rims here are like poking up a little bit on top of the tires, right? And we have to be very careful. Like I always say, whenever you take a load, it's not just your responsibility to get it to the destination to the people who bought it. It's also your job to make sure you get it there without damaging it. So we always got to put protection. I always use protection. It's Trucker Josh's slogan, right? Always use protection. I want to protect the straps and also protect the freight. And we're all set and ready to go. There's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 straps on this load. I just retightened them, so we're ready to rock and roll. Let's get out there, I wanna go home. Now I gotta get back in the truck. <sighs> the things I do for you guys. Okay, how did I do this before? Okay, so we step in just a little bit. These shoes are so old, they're all full of holes. Here, my foot over here, grab over there, and <laughs> see, I'm like Spider Man. Oh, oh, I stretched my back a little funny. Josh, you're in your mid 30s. Careful what you do, you're not Spider Man. I'm Trucker Spider Man. Okay, so everything is all set, paperwork is all where it should be. It says Pepsi on it, but it's actually a coffee from the Highway 34 truck stop here in West Burlington. Very nice people here. Uh, got supper from them last night. And uh, here, let me show you their building a little bit here from the outside anyway. Oh, uh, I got a livestock hauler coming in here right away. Anybody want some bacon? Man, I'm hungry now. Why'd my mouth start watering? Hmm. Bacon. Okay, Highway 34, truck stop. It's like a mom and pa privately owned truck stop. It's not like one of the big chains or anything. 
great food in there. There's a great restaurant and a uh, nice little convenience store as well. All right, all right. All right, all right, all right. You guys ready to rock? I'm ready. Once, one more time, making sure my trailer brakes engage and disengage. Uh, I guess I'll wait for this guy. We gotta go around that way, so. I guess I can go through here. Okay. I need to go left from here. So I can't turn here. 2500, brand new 2500 GMC Sierra. Oh, wish I'd be taking that thing home with me right now. She's a beaut, Clark. Oh, oh, oh. Big pan. It's too cool to park with the rest of the trucks in a parking spot. Parked over there instead. Okay. Doesn't bother me. There's another 2500 Sierra over here. That wasn't the white one though, I don't like that as much. I like the black ones better. I always like black vehicles, I don't know why. Maybe because it makes me feel important, you know? Like... The president drives in black vehicles all the time. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I like it better. I think it looks more classy. That's just me though, some people think white looks more classy. I know black shows dirt really quickly and shows scratches very easily and dings, but meh. It's what it is, right? Nobody coming from that way. Nobody coming from that way. Nobody coming from that way. And nobody coming from that way. Check twice. These stoplights are still flashing red, so it's just a four-way stop. Oh, we can go straight ahead here. Is that a truck route? Yeah, that's a truck. Okay, I can just go straight through. It'll take me right to the highway. Okay, that's what we'll do. I thought I was turning left, but this will work better. Engine brake ordinance in force. That's a good sign that it's a truck route. I don't know many four-wheelers that have engine brakes. There might be some, but there's also another truck coming right there. Yeah. Oh, oh. I guess when I see the engine brake sign, I should actually turn my engine brake off. That would be the good thing to do.
I'm at a rest area just inside Minnesota on I-35 northbound. It's time for a little break. I'm debating whether or not to take my half hour here. I sort of want to go somewhere where I can get a coffee for my half hour, but I don't really need a coffee yet. So maybe we'll make this our half hour and then just quickly stop for a quick one down the road if I need it. So in the meantime, while I'm here, I'm going to clean off these mirrors. A little dirty. Give me the old bull snot treatment. Put my bull snot right down here. Where's my visible? Is this visible? There we go. There we go. See? Just shake it first. Give it a good coating. Let it sit for a second and soak in. The way I do it. That's what I use. Just a little squeegee. Got off Amazon. Let's go like this. And corner of the side there. It doesn't get everything quite off. You still gotta take uh microfiber to it, but I'm going to get the majority of it off of there. Take my rag here. And you get the rest. Some of that dirt is very stubborn. I'm just going to wait for it to dry. See, see it drying there? See that? This is dry. It's a lot easier to wipe off. There we go. There you go. See? You guys look great. Pat yourself on the back. You're looking good today. I'm happy to see that every single tire is still on the trailer. Still coming with me. That's good news. I need all of them. So the way we tie these down is we tie them over in an X pattern. So this strap goes over that way, this strap goes over that way, that forms an X on top. And that holds them in place. And you crank them down pretty tight so they don't bounce. Because you know tires, they like to bounce. And then we have that styrofoam like I was telling you before on the top, underneath the straps, to protect the paint on the rims from my straps rubbing on them. And put the smaller stacks up in front, and it gives a pretty even flow of air. We've been getting great fuel economy with this load. The air just slips around us. It doesn't have too many gaps where it can go in and catch, like in here, that's where I got my tarps. You can sort of see the air just sort of slips right past the trailer. Goes up over my truck, over these first couple of tires, right over the back. So it's, it's a really good load to have. And this is why I waited till all the way through the weekend, till Monday to get it. So I've just been walking around here waiting. It's a beautiful, beautiful evening out here. And I want to enjoy this as much as I can. Because apparently, <laughs> apparently, we're expecting snow back at home this coming week. <laughs> ah, yes. Wouldn't it be nice if I could just stay down here? Ah, but this isn't home. The snow and the cold, that's home. It wouldn't be the same if I didn't have to live through that once a year. I don't mind it, it's not that bad. Oh, we complain about it, but it's, the cold's not bad. We, it's 2023, we have so many things that can keep us warm, well-insulated homes, multiple different ways of heating our homes and keeping ourselves warm, keeping the truck warm. So it's more of an inconvenience, but it's one that you sort of, you learn to live with. It's just part of who we are. Winter's coming. In fact, I'd actually argue that cold 
is a good thing for national security and safety, personal safety at home. Because it gets down to minus 50, minus 60 in wintertime, there's a lot of riffraff out there, you might call it, a lot of people who cause trouble. You'll notice that crime goes down in the cold months of winter because even the criminals are hiding inside, keeping warm, staying out of trouble. It's also in the interest of national security. It's much, much harder to invade a country when the country is frozen solid. There's not many other people around the world aside from, you know, well, Europeans and Russians that are used to this cold weather like we are and equipped to fight wars in it. So even our military, like they have military bases all the way, all the way up north. And so does the US and Alaska. We're all equipped for cold weather fighting, but usually when winter comes, you can, you can sort of rely on the fact that things will probably cool down and calm down, especially if there's been unrest in the streets, sort of like there kind of is now. Not, not so bad at where we are, but yeah, you know, winter's coming and that means everybody who's causing problems goes home to stay warm. <laughs> stays out of the streets so really it's not that bad the cold weather also kills off all poisonous animals so we don't have any poisonous snakes or too many poisonous spiders especially around where we are the cold weather kills them all every year it's wonderful wonderful See, you made the news again the other day. I saw you. Everyone's always so happy. What's going on up here? See, I want to turn on to I-94 I westbound. So not eastbound, not here. Meters. Slide right on I-494 west and then 5 west. I see flashing lights Slide ahead. Right 10 meters. Where are they? Oh, they're right in here. Okay, let's slow right down for them because I got to go right past them here. Wonder what happened here. In 100 meters, slide right on I-494 West and then 5 West. Slow down traffic just a little bit for that officer there. Because you know, people will just go flying right past them. So, this is 494. So, this merge lane is actually kind of nice, it just turns into an actual lane. The lane ends eventually up ahead, but here I don't really have to worry about traffic too much so I can just stay in my lane here get up to speed. This road for seven kilometers. I have about a mile or so to get up to speed and then get into traffic beside me on my left. Lane's 
still hasn't ended yet. Maybe I was... I know it exits eventually. <laughs> We're at exit 331 on Interstate 94 in North Dakota. It's a truck stop here. And I'm tired and I'm running out of time. 100 meters, shoot to the left on I-94. No, 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 we're gonna go see if there's some parking for us here. Let's see if I can figure out where this place is. Oh, okay, it's right on to my right here. Dark and it's raining just a little bit, which makes it harder to see. I haven't stopped here in a long time. done this. Oh, wow, lots of parking here. Look at that. Wow. Cool little sign set. Okay, let's go see if we can find some parking. Oh, definitely on the plains. It's windy and cold. I'll show you more in the morning once the sun comes up. But we made it here, found a parking spot. I'll see you guys in the morning. I have a feeling it's gonna snow overnight. Yay. Grab my coffee this following morning. I check the tires. I check the tires on the other side on the way into the building. This building is amazing here. It's huge. Awesome. So this truck stop has been completely renovated. It's a marathon. It's just massive inside there. They've really done a good job redoing this. I haven't been here in years apparently. So we got here last night. We got here pretty late. How about 11 o'clock? I stayed here for a good night, more than my 10 hours, because I know that even if I would have stayed here for my mandatory just 10 hours, there's no way I would have made it to my customer tonight before they closed. I would have been there at like 6 o'clock tonight anyways, and they closed at 4. So we already determined that we're going to be delivering it tomorrow morning. So I uh, stayed here, got a little bit of work done, and uh, went inside there this morning and explored around a little bit, and let me tell you, these American truck stops, there's just, there's nothing like it. You just walk in there and you just want to wave a big American flag and just go, America! There's so much better. Like, I'm sorry to the truck stop. I'm talking about the prairies of Canada too. I mean, like, I get it. Out east, there's some pretty nice truck stops. In Canada, Eastern Canada gets all the nice stuff all the time, right? But, uh, they still don't compare to the convenience of these massive stores here in the U.S. What is rattling here? Are you kidding me? Hey, hey, let's not start the day like that. Hey. Steering column. We've had this discussion before. My steering column likes to rattle sometimes. It's just the cover around it, right? Eventually, I want to replace it, but it's not broken. It just rattles so yeah uh, I was talking about the truck stops down here what I find now this is just my personal opinion what I find is that truck drivers in the United States get treated like kings and queens it's incredible the services that are available to them the only thing that's not available to them that's available to like drivers in Europe from what I've heard I'm not European but uh, I've never been to Europe don't know anybody uh, don't don't have any family in Europe. I do have friends in Europe. <laughs> but uh, they're telling me uh, that they have gyms in some of the truck stops. I think that would be a fantastic idea to add into the North American truck stops. Instead of a driver's lounge where drivers can just go and sit. We sit all day. That's all we do. We need to be active. So instead of having a driver's lounge where, where you know you just continue to be 
inactive. Have a, a gym that drivers can use. Have it like members only or something. You gotta have like your pilot flying J card or your TA card or something. Or maybe even a monthly membership if that's what people want to do, but that will discourage people from using it. And you want truckers in North America to use these gym facilities. Here's a trucker Josh idea for you. Turn these, like maybe keep a driver's lounge because sometimes guys gotta wait for a shower somewhere, right? You gotta have somewhere to sit, but truck stops, you're doing everything in your power in the United States to impress the truck drivers. You're doing a very good job with me. I am very impressed. Now, how about this? What would you guys think about adding like a gym into your truck stop for the drivers to use on their time off? So that at the end of our day, we could park, go inside, get a good workout in, then go have a shower, then go have a nice supper in your restaurant, and then go to bed. Wake up in the morning, buy some fuel from you, and we're on our way. How about that? Do you guys know of any truck stops in North America that have a gym? Or anything that promotes healthy living to truck drivers? Because truckers in the US, they're treated like gold, they're treated like, treated like kings and queens, to the point where they live such a comfortable lifestyle that they have to do so much little physical work that it's very, very unhealthy for a lot of them. For all of us, it's very unhealthy being, and it's hard to be healthy. Why don't we try to start pushing towards being more healthy? And of course, when you first put them in there, you're gonna get the naysayers like, ah, oh, look at Jim, who's gonna go use the gym? Make it you, you go use the gym. And then the next driver sees you in there and is like, oh, he's using the gym, maybe I'll, maybe I'll try it out too. And then you got two drivers in there, and then two more drivers drive, walk past, and they're like, hey, that's a good idea, I wouldn't mind a good workout before I go to bed. You know, gets the blood pumping, gets you in shape. After a long day of just sitting, you go have a shower, go have supper, grab some fuel, go to bed. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think it would be a? Do you think it'd be a hit in North America? I know, I know a lot of people would be against it for whatever reason because that's the way it is. But so I want to thank you for joining me today. Thank you for hanging out with me on the road. I appreciate it. Remember when you're on the road. Think of me and think of all the other truckers out there. We want to get home safely to our families. And if you're the trucker, remember everyone else out there on the road and those small cars, they want to get home to their families too. And our trucks are very heavy and their cars are very light. <laughs> we can do a lot more damage to them than they can do to us. So let's remember to be careful out there and uh, try to keep our tempers cool. I know that's a challenge. I'm speaking to myself too, let's try to keep our tempers cool. You know, if you gotta yell at something, yell at your windshield, don't don't roll down your window and road rage at the driver beside you. Just, you know, road rage at your steering wheel if you have to, I get it, I get it, but just keep it inside your truck and don't let things escalate. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos lately of road rage and like fights breaking out and like people driving erratically and like putting everybody else on the road in danger. I know that when your mind goes into that mindset of anger and road rage, I know, you, you forget about everyone else on the road except for that guy that you're mad at. Uh, I totally get it. But in the meantime, while you're road raging, all these other families are out there on the road around you, and you're putting all of them at risk. For what? For what? What are you going to do when you catch the guy you're mad at? You're going to pull him out and you're going to beat him up in the middle of the highway? Is that what you're going to do? You're going to go to jail for that? Well, I know it's tough. I don't like some of these drivers out here either. They make me really mad, but you know what I find? It, it's it's satisfying sometimes just to yell at your windshield instead of yelling directly at them, you know? Just let it go, let them get out of your sight. Give it five minutes and you're on to the next thing and you're, you're it's, it's gone. It's, just, it's not risk, it's not worth the risk of getting yourself into trouble. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos lately of this crazy road rage. People are crazy, man, <laughs> they're crazy. You've seen them too, right? No, if you haven't, just go onto YouTube and, and look up uh, Road Rage. Man! You gotta wonder, like, what's going on in these people's lives that they're so angry? So easily, right? At people they don't know for the simplest things. Oh well. I'm gonna end it here though. Remember everybody, please drive safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow.